Hello. Let us continue our discussion on pure substances. In this session, let us understand how to construct how to represent thermodynamic uh, processes of pure substance, pure substances on PV and TS coordinates. Also, we will calculate work done, heat transfer, energy change, entropy change for the systems executing various thermodynamic processes using pure substance as the working substance or maybe any ideal gas. Let us consider a how to represent a pure substance on PV and TS coordinates. So first let us consider a constant volume process or what you can call it as ISO coring process. Isochoric process. So the PV coordinates as I mentioned in the previous lecture, this is saturated liquid line, this is saturated vapor line, this is the critical part. Let us say initially the system is at state 1, then I bring the system to state 2, the constant volume, under the constant volume process. Here it is in wet state, here it is in superheated state. So volume is constant in this case, but the system or the substance has, was initially at wet state, now it is in the superheated state. On the TS coordinates, let us say this is the initial state and this will become final state. It is in the superheated condition. This process how do we rep represent it? represent on Molier chart. As I said, Molier chart is enthalpy versus entropy. Here, there are dotted lines like this. These are what we can call them as constant volume lines on HS coordinates. Correct? Suppose initially it is at this state. That means to say you know the volume is written on this line. Also, the drainage fraction is also written. Here these are constant drainage fraction lines. So, we can take the what is the constant, the drainage fraction written over here, is the volume written over here. If I maintain the constant volume, let us say heating or whatever it is. So, then it will come to let us say state 2. At this point, what is the temperature we can find out? What is the enthalpy we can find out? What is the entropy at this point we can find out? So, all these things are possible. That is how we can represent the constant volume process on enthalpy and entropy diagram. So there are many such constant volume lines you can you can see here. So they are all dotted lines, marked dotted. Okay. Now let us look at things. Suppose the initial state is wet and the final state is superheated. What do we mean by initial state is wet and final state is superheated. You see here, this one is a drainage fraction one line. So what you can call it as, this is saturated vapor line. Assume your initial state is here and this is your final state 2. This is state 1 and this is state 2. Or, see initially as I said it is wet, 
and it is superheated wet superheated so v1 is xvg because i have already defined the drainage fraction as x that is nothing but the mass of vapor divided by total mass correct in the earlier chapter earlier uh, session and uh, volume v1 that means to say volume at this point volume at this point this volume let us consider from here to here this volume is let us say vg this volume is let us say vf since this volume is small let us neglect this so we consider this volume as vg and then this volume as xvg correct so that means to say v1 is equal to x correct huh? and x2 of course volume at this point we can find out v2 so v1 is xvg v2 is v superheated so since it is a constant volume process v1 is equal to v2 so xvg you find out v superheated you find out then you can find out this correct this v superheated either we can find out from the property tables or from molier diagram you can find out same thing vg from property tables we can find out then we can find out the drainage fraction if it is initial and final state both are wet let us say it is like this let us say it is pv and this is how the diagram is so this is state 2 this is state Definitely, this is at one pressure, this is at another pressure. So, this is V1 and this is V2. So, this you can say again X2 VG2. This you can call it as X1 VG1. Both volumes are equal and VG1 VG2 values we can obtain from the property tables and you can find out if you know the drainage fraction at one point you can find the drainage fraction at the other point okay now you want to find heat interaction work interaction so q12 delta u integral pdv if it is a closed system executing a constant volume process since v is constant integral 1 to 2 pdv will become zero then this will become delta u. What is delta u? You know, h is equal to u plus pv. So, I know the enthalpy then at point 0.2. I know the enthalpy at point 0.1. From that, I can find out internal energy change. Now, how do we find enthalpy here? Enthalpy at point 0.1, as I mentioned earlier, this will become at this pressure what is hf1 and hfg is known to us at this pressure and drainage fraction if you know multiply this with the drainage fraction you will get what is the enthalpy at point same way we can find the enthalpy at point 2 that is nothing but hf2 okay then x2 hfg2 that is latent heat hfg1 so suppose this pressure is at one bar at one bar from the property tables that is steam tables you can obtain hf1 values hfg values correct so similarly at this pressure you can get hf2 values and hfg values so once we know these values we can find out 
and these values we can substitute we can always find the internal energy change so let us look at something this pure substance undergoing a constant pressure process that is pressure is constant initially it is at wet condition then it is in the superheated condition on the ts coordinates we get mark here 1 to 2 okay now let us go back to molier diagram see here this is a constant pressure line let us say it is a 4 bar it is a 10 bar it is a 20 bar let us say initial state is this that means what is the pressure pressure is say 20 bar and its strainless fraction is 0 0.95 pressure is known entropy is known enthalpy is known and this is a constant pressure process you trace this along this line let us say this is the final state 2 so the temperature is say 450 degrees celsius pressure is 20 bar and you can get the entropy here you can get the enthalpy here correct we can also if you have a volume line we can find out the what is the specific volume also this is state 1 that is state 2 okay that's how we can represent the process so represent the process then definitely all the properties look here q12 w12 u2 minus u1 that is closed system executing a process okay then work done we can write, write it as p v2 minus v1 and this is u2 minus u1 and finally u2 and PV2 we can club together it will become H2 minus H1 so if you want to find out what is the enthalpy at this point you know and enthalpy at this point you know so see that H2 and H1 that is the thing you can also obtain the same thing from property tables that is steam tables now if it is a constant temperature process so on PV coordinates it looks On TS coordinate, it is like this. State 1 is also in the superheated condition. State 2 is also in the superheated condition. Or if you go back to this one, you take any one line. So let us say it's 500 degrees Celsius. 500 degrees Celsius, let us say it is 500 degrees Celsius. 20 bar pressure or whatever it is with constant temperature 500 degrees celsius let us say 100 bar whatever it is so now you can get this constant temperature process. so entropy enthalpy values we can see that correct it is a compression process or if it is an expansion process this way we can see this right so you can measure the enthalpies and you can get the values right sir So constant temperature process, again you can write like this, so we can see here, correct, what is the heat transfer process, okay, we can read required properties from this, once we represent the process, similarly you can represent a constant entropy. Maybe let us look at say 50 bar, uh, 
150 bar pressure, let us say 550 degrees Celsius. 50 bar pressure, 500 degrees Celsius. This is the point. It is 550 degrees Celsius. Bring in constant entropy, probably to 200 degrees Celsius. So you can find out. This is how we can represent a constant entropy masses. Right? That is how we can represent the processes experienced by pure substances when the system undergoes a change of state. Right? So let us work out some simple examples. A piston cylinder, a piston contains 3 kg of air at 20 degrees Celsius. 300 kilopascal pressure. Okay. It is now heated up in a constant pressure process to 600 K. Right. It is a constant pressure process. State 1 is given 3 kg of air at 20 degrees Celsius and the pressure is 300 kilopascal. This is 300 kilopascal. This is a 20 degree Celsius line or 293k. So you can see here. Then the you see constant pressure process. This is heated to 600 k. The pressure is constant. Heated to 600 k. Right. So it is temperature volume diagram is written. Okay. Find the final volume. Okay. So now the question is it is a constant pressure process. Volume is directly proportional to temperature. We can write like this state 1, T1, P1, ideal, ideal gas, P1, V1 is equal to MRT1. So, volume V1, you can find out mass is given 3 kg, R for ideal gas is known 0.287, T1 that is 293 and P1 atmosphere pressure that is P1 is 300 kilopascal given. So, we can find out V1 value. Now, final volume you have to find out. P2 is P1 equal to P2, V2 is equal to MRT2. So, V2 is equal to MRT2 by P2. Here, mass is known again, R is known, temperature T2 is given, 600 K is given. And uh, since it is a constant pressure process, P2 is same, 300. So, we can find out what is the final volume. So, work done is nothing but the area under this curve. That area is integral PdV means P is constant with V2 minus V1 that is there. V2 is known, V1 is known, multiplied by P we will get the work done. So, find the final volume, you know this. Plot the process path on a PV diagram that is also then find the work done in the process. You find out the area under the curve. That's something. Okay. Next problem. A piston cylinder contains 0.5 kg of air. Okay. 0.5 kg mass. Piston cylinder. Okay contains 0.5 kg of air and initial pressure is 500 kilopascal and temperature is 500 k. Okay, so this is you can call it as P1, <coughs> this you call it as T1, okay, P1 is 500 and 500 kPa kilopascal 
and T1 is 500k. Okay, V is expanded, move the piston towards right. V is linearly decreasing with volume to a final state. V is linearly decreasing. Okay. V2 is equal to something like mx plus c kind of a thing. Yes, as the volume increases, pressure decreases. To your final volume, now piston comes here, then the final volume to your final state, that is P2 is equal to 100 kilopascal. And uh, final temperature T2 is equal to 300 K. 300 K. Find the work in the process. So now let us look at state 1, that is P1, 500 kilopascal. Correct? And the temperature is 500 K. This is state 1. But I do not know what's the volume there. Let it be there. This one. The pressure decreases linearly so that it will come to a pressure of 100 kilopascal, right? 100, and the temperature is going to be 300. Is that okay? Right. Now we have to find out the area under this curve to find the work done. So, process P equal to A plus PV, work done is integral PDV, so it is in the MX plus C form, that is a kind of things, that is right, it is MXC, A plus BV, so I will just substitute A plus PV area and we will get the T equation between state 1 to state 2, okay, we will get this. V1 is MR T1 P1. It is known, this is known, this is known, this is known. So we can find V1. Similarly, V2 also we can find out. Substitute V2, V1, P1, P2, everything is known to us. And we can find out what is the work done. Right? Yeah. Consider a mass going through a polytropic process that is PV to the power of N equal to C that is the polytropic process where pressure is directly proportional to volume. So N is equal to minus 1. Okay. P by V equal to C. The process starts with P equal to 0, V equal to 0 and ends with P equal to 600 kilopascal, V equal to 0.01 V. The physical cell could be as in problem. Okay. Find the, let us not bother about, find the boundary work done by the mass. So it is like this. So integral PDV, that is nothing but, you do this, that is nothing but, it's, since it's linear, <coughs> this must be. Okay, 1 to 2 if I write and P a equation of straight line if I substitute and I can find out this. So now V1, V2 values you can substitute over here and I will get this. This is 3 kilo joule. Correct? Again you substitute here for P formula A plus sub B. The piston cylinder contains carbon dioxide at 3 kilo and 100 degrees Celsius with a volume of 0.2 meter cube. Mass is added at such a rate that the gas compresses according to the law PV to the power of 1.2 is equal to constant to a final temperature of 2. Determine the work done during a process. This is PV to the power of N equal to constant. We have derived the equation work done is given by this equation. 
So in this PV is nothing but MRT. So we can substitute and get this. So MR we can find out using this equation. So substitute you get this value. Go back substitute MR value. T2 value is known. T1 value is known. N value is known. You can find out what is the work done. So a gas initially at 1 mega Pascal is constrained in a piston and cylinder arrangement with an initial volume of 0.1 meter cube. The gas is then slowly expanded according to the law PV equal to constant that is isothermal process until a final pressure of 100 kPa is reached. Determine the work for this process. <coughs> Actually it is an isothermal process work done is given by this. So you know P1, V1, Ln, V2 by V1. Substitute, you will get this one. Helium gas expands from 125 kilopascal, 350k and 0.25 meter to 100 kilopascal in a polytropic process. That is PV to the power N process. So here work done is given by this equation, which we have derived earlier. Substitute appropriate values, you will get. So here goes through a polytropic process from this thing to this values to these values. Find the polytropic exponent. We have to find out n itself. Right. So we can get v1, we can get v2, p2 by p1. Now we have to find out n. Great. n is. So if I take log p2 by n, log of v1 by v2. So n is equal to these values. V2, now P1, you know V1, you know V2, you substitute, you will get an N value. And work done equation is already derived, just substitute, you will get the work done value. So, piston cylinder contains 0.1 kg of air at 100 kPa, 400k, goes through a polytropic compression process, N equal to 1, to a pressure of how much work has the air done in the process. Again, work done is this equation. So this is again given as MRT2 minus MRT1. MR you take out T2 minus T1. Mass is given, R is known. T2, T1 relationship from here we know. We can find out initial values if you know means we can find out T2 value. So substitute over here, you can find out what is the work done. It's a direct substitution problem. A balloon we have so that the pressure is P equal to C2 V to the power of 1.3 and C2 is 100 kilo Pascal per meter. The balloon is blown up with air from a starting volume of 1 meter cube to a volume of 3 meter cube. Find the final mass of air assuming it is at 25 degrees Celsius and in the work done by the air. So pressure relationships are given. P2 is given over here. So then C2 values are given volume is known then we can find out this value we can this value and work done during a polytropic process is given by this equation you can find out work done correct so we know p2 we know correct v2 rt2 so now the question is mass can be determined that's a direct substitution into this okay these problems gives an idea like how exactly thermodynamic processes can be represented on PV and TS coordinates and work as well as other heat interactions can be determined. So there are many such examples available in the reference books We are advised to solve such examples. So we will look into some more examples in the next session. Thank you very much.